Knitters, I'm Caddy Novell Ledbetter of Caddy Knits, and today I'm going to be working on the Knit Ferile Turtleneck by Yarnspirations.com. This is an intermediate level pattern, so you want to be comfortable knitting and purling, working in the round on a circular needle and on double pointed needles, but you don't have to have worked ferile before. This is a wonderful first ferile project. The pattern is extremely well written and easy to follow, and I'm going to be there to help you through the more challenging parts of the pattern. The sweater itself is knit in the round on a circular needle through the body to the armhole. The sleeves are knit separately on double pointed needles to the armhole. Then the sleeves are joined back to the body on your circular needle again through the yoke up to the turtleneck where we switch back again to double pointed needles to finish the turtleneck. The Stitches that are held on safety pins or holders at the armhole are grafted together at the end. So the sweater is completely seamless. On, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do ferrile. I'm going to show you two colors in your right hand, two colors in your left hand, and one in each hand. I'm going to show you how to read your charts, and I'm going to show you how to graft the underarm stitches together, which is my favorite thing. It's like knitting magic. So before we get started, let's just take a closer look at our pattern and our yarn. So if you look at page three of your pattern, you'll see a great picture of version one and version two of the sweater. And you can choose which one you like better. The difference is the colors are used in different orders, the contrast colors. And you'll be following different charts, which we'll get to in a minute. The yarn we're using today is by Karen and Pantone, and it is gorgeous yarn. 60% acrylic, 20% merino wool, and 20% nylon. Our main color is mushroom grayish, and our contrast color is the morning blues. And what's really fun about this yarn is that the color experts at Karen have teamed up with the color experts at Pantone to bring you these beautiful color braids. And each braid comes with five separate links of gorgeous color that have been carefully chosen to work together in any order you want. You'll see the color inspiration right on the front of the tag here, with a little number underneath each color. And those correspond to your pattern on page one. So if you're working version one, you'll know your contrast color A is color 194340, which is right here, 194340. So I know cost, contrast color A is the third color down in my braid. Now before you can work with this yarn, you do need to separate the links and wind them into balls. And if you don't know how to do that, there's a separate tutorial on the Yarnspirations channel which shows you how to do that. So once you're ready with some yarn wound up, we will dive right into our chart and do some fair isle. So before we get started doing our fair isle, let's just first take a look at our chart. We're going to start with the sleeve charts. So depending on the version you're doing, you're either going to follow this sleeve chart or this sleeve chart. And they are the same, it's just that the colors are used in different orders. So we're going to be focusing right here on this chart. The first thing I want to note is that every square in a chart is a stitch. When you're working in the round, you always start on the right and work to the left. So every round you're going to start here reading right to left. We have an eight stitch repeat in our sleeve chart. That means that everything within these lines is repeated over and over till the end of the round. So we have extra stitches worked on the sides that are not repeated. And that becomes really important on round five when we have an increase, which I'll get to in a minute. So you can practice this part on a swatch if you want, or if you're ready to start your sleeve, go right ahead, dive in. We're going to work on round one together. Before I work with multiple colors, I like to put my balls in a Ziploc bag. This helps them not all get tangled up on each other, so I just drop it in here. I zip it up so that the ball can't come out, but the yarn can still come through. And this way, my six colors that I'm going to be working with in this project won't be bouncing around, tangling up on each other. Okay, so the first way of doing ferrule I'm going to show you is two colors in your right hand. Our first stitch is the contrast color, then main color, contrast main, one by one, all the way to the end of the round. So I just join my contrast color, just like I would for any other project and knit that first stitch. Then I'm just going to tighten up where that first stitch is kind of loose, just pulling on the tail of my contrast color and my main color. Then I'll get my tail out of the way there. So now I'm going to wrap with my pinky to get some tension. You can wrap any way you want, whatever you're comfortable with. 
Pick one color to be your top color, which will sit on your index finger, and one color to be your bottom color. You want to maintain that for the entire round. You don't want to switch part way through. Your top finger and your bottom finger will give slightly different tensions, and if you switch halfway through, you may notice it from the right side with the shape of your stitches. So my next color is my main color, so I'm just going to bring it around and knit it. Next I have my contrast color, back to main color, and when I work with my top color, I kind of hold my bottom color a little down and out of the way, and then when I go back to my bottom color, I keep my top color a little higher so it stays out of the way. They're both moving, but my bottom color is the only one that wraps around my needle. You want to make sure you do this nice and loosely. Fair Isle has a way of being much tighter than your stockinette stitch. So to have a nice transition from stockinette into Fair Isle back into stockinette, you want to make sure you work your Fair Isle looser than you would your stockinette. And that'll make it look nice. It really does want to be tighter, so you have to be conscious of that. So let's look at one color in each hand now. This is probably the most common way to do Fair Isle. So you pick one color to be in your left hand, wrapping any way you're comfortable with, and one color to be in your right hand. And you want to maintain that as well. You don't want to switch part way through, again, for the same reason for tension. So my next color will be my main color. So I'm just bringing that around and knitting it. And then grabbing the main color, contrast color, back to main color, again nice and loosely. Just like that. And then you could even, if you wanted to, you could do two in the left hand, and I'll show you what that looks like too. So one is the top and one is the bottom, just like before with our right hand. So my next color is main color, so I would Grab main color, bring it through, then contrast color, then back to main color, all the way to the end of the round. Again, nice and loose. And from the wrong side, it'll look like this. So you have these bars of yarn behind that are not pulled tight in any way. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is how to do the increase. And like I said before, the increase happens outside of our eight stitch repeat. So we only do it at the very beginning and very end of our round. I have a mini sleeve here that I'm going to show you on. I've worked a round four, which was a plain turquoise round, and now I'm ready to work round five with my increase. I like to do the lifted increase, so I'm going to show you that. And that is where you insert your stitch into the stitch under the needle, you knit that stitch, and you also knit the stitch on the needle. So that first turquoise stitch in our chart, it doesn't exist yet, I need to create it. So I'm knitting into the stitch under the one on the needle, and that will be turquoise. And before I remove it from the needle, I need to work into the stitch that's there, and that is blue. So that's my increase, all the way to the end, one by one, and then I have another increase at the end of the round. So we'll just skip ahead and pretend this is my last stitch of my round, and I need to do that lifted increase again. So I knit into the stitch under the one on the needle, knit that stitch, then knit the stitch on the needle in my blue. Just like that. So let's skip ahead and look at our yoke chart because there are some major differences in our yoke chart and our sleeve chart. And what's really important about that, if you look up to your key, is that we have a dash here over two stitches, which means that we knit two together. The first time that happens is on round four, and we need to remember that that is repeated. So round four will look like this, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together. 
So with our sleeve chart where we had increases only on each end because they were not within the repeat, in our yoke chart they are within the repeat. And again round six will look like knit seven, knit two together, knit seven, knit two together, knit seven, all the way to the end of the round. So the last thing I want to show you in Fair Isle is what it looks like when you have four of one color into three, back into four, back into three. We never have to do more than four stitches in a row in our chart in this pattern, which is really great. So we don't have to do anything special behind our work. We can just very loosely bring our color back into play after working four of another color. So in this little swatch here, I've worked four of my mint contrast color and I'm ready to bring my main color back in. And what I'm going to do is just bring it in nice and loose. Well, I'm not pulling on it at all. I'm just laying it in nice and loose to bring it back into play. One, two, three. Then back to contrast color nice and loosely. And from the back, it'll look like this. So nothing's pulled very tight. I've got these bars of yarn behind my work. And they're nice and loose. All right, last thing we're going to do is graft our underarm seams, which is my favorite thing ever. It's like knitting magic. So before we start grafting our underarm stitches, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have slipped your stitches, if they are on safety pins, onto your double pointed needles. It's going to be a lot easier to graft from needles than from safety pins. And what you can do is take your needle, slide it through the stitches on your safety pin, and then remove the safety pin. The next thing you want to make sure of is that all your stitches are oriented properly on the needle. If they are twisted like this, they will not work out with our grafting. It will not look right. So you want to make sure they're all oriented correctly. And then you have a tail that you trimmed to 12 inches when you did your sleeve that should be hanging from the right. So if you need to flip your sweater around, that's fine. I'm adding some white yarn where your tail would be. I want to show you in white because I think the contrast will make for a good visual for you to really see what I'm doing. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is go into the first stitch on the bottom needle purl-wise, so as if to purl, just like that. Bring my yarn through. I am not taking this stitch off the needle yet. Every stitch is going to be worked through twice before we remove it from the needle. So the next thing I'm going to do is come up to the top corner here. And I want to kind of close this gap here, so I'm going to grab something in the corner from the back, just like that. I don't want to put my tapestry needle through anything that already has a big hole, because it'll just make the hole bigger. So I'm going to go right through here. And you don't need to pull tight every time. We're just going to leave it just like that. We're going to tighten it all up after. And then I'm going to go into the first stitch on the top needle, knit-wise, and leave it on the needle. Then I come back down to my bottom stitch, back through the stitch I've already gone through, knit-wise. Now I've gone through that one twice, I can take it off the needle, turn, purl-wise, leave it on the needle. Again, don't pull tight here, you don't need to yet. Back up to the top, back through the one I already came through, purl-wise, take it off the needle, knit-wise, leave it on the needle. Back down, knit-wise, off the needle, purl-wise, leave it on the needle. Back up, purl-wise, off the needle, knit-wise, leave it on the needle. Knit-wise, off, purl-wise, leave it on. And as you get to the end, your needle will want to fall out, so that's why I keep moving mine up so they don't fall. Purl-wise. Knit-wise, slide your needle up, back down, knit-wise, purl-wise, leave it on the needle. Oop. And that may happen, you may need to re-thread your tapestry needle. 
back up, purl-wise, knit-wise. There we go. Back down, knit-wise, purl-wise. knit-wise, purl-wise, and your stitches are really going to want to fall off when you get to the end, so be very, very careful. So what I'm going to do with my last stitch, because it's definitely going to fall off, is I'm going to get my yarn ready to move up, and then I'm just going to hook my needle into my sweater so it doesn't go anywhere. Purl-wise off, knit-wise, leave it on. I'm going to do the same thing with this needle. Just shove it in like that. Knit-wise into the last stitch. Now I can remove that needle. And what I want to do is grab something in the corner here, just like I did on the first corner. So I don't want to go in here, because that's already a big gaping hole. And I want to come across from my last stitch. So I'm going to go right here. Then I'm going to go back up to my top stitch is the last one, purl-wise, off the needle. And I'm going to grab something up in this corner as well, across from my stitch. So this looks good right here. All right, now you get to watch the magic happen. This is so cool. We're going to work back from right to left, back where our tail is. So you won't have this tail hanging out. Your tail is attached on the inside of your sweater. So what you're going to do is start tightening those stitches up. So I'm kind of working half stitch to half stitch, or half V to half V, giving them a tug, not too tight, pulling them up half stitch by half stitch, all the way across. This is so cool. And if you don't do it right the first time, don't worry. It's not the easiest thing. It may take a little practice. All the way to the other end where your tail is. And when you get close, you can pull on your tail. And then now all I need to do is take that tail to the inside and sew in from the inside, sew my tail in. And check it out. I have created knitting where there was no knitting before. I'm going to just put my hand up the inside of the sweater so I'll give you a better look here. It's completely flat. Blows my mind every time that we can do things like this. Knitting is so cool. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for ski season to start. I'm totally going to wear this sweater skiing. It's so cozy and warm. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and whether it was your first time or your 50th time doing Fair Isle, I hope you had fun, and I hope you found this helpful. I'm Caddy Mava Ledbetter. You can find me at caddyknits.com, and until next time, I wish you very happy knitting. Mm -hmm.